DT Swiss has just launched its latest wheels, the ERC 1100 and 1400. And these are do-it-all wheels aimed at endurance riding and big days in the saddle. And there's some really impressive engineering behind them with some very cool tech and interesting design ideas that I suspect other brands will look to emulate in the future, including why deeper may not necessarily be faster. So I'm gonna tell you all about them. DT Swiss has invested a huge amount of thought and research into trying to characterize and quantify all the elements that make a wheel as fast as possible over long endurance rides. And he's calling this concept Aero Plus. Now when we're choosing the optimum wheel, we often consider the depth of the wheel and the weight of the wheel. But these are just two parts of the puzzle. There are many other characteristics that are responsible for wheel performance. So I'm going to explain those now. DT Swiss has a long established relationship with the Formula One engineers at Swiss side. One of the first things that this relationship did was look at the effects of real world conditions on wheel aerodynamics. And this was done using technological approaches pioneered in Formula One. What this revealed was the importance of wheel stability. Now, if you've ever ridden deep section wheels in the wind and felt them twitch when they catch the wind, you'll know what I mean and you'll relate to what I'm about to say. So in aerodynamic terms, when a wheel twitches like that, what's happening is it's stalling. It's the same concept as what happens to a plane wing when a plane stalls, when the airspeed over the aerofoil on the wing is insufficient to maintain lift. The plane falls out of the sky. Not quite as dramatic on a bike wheel, but the same kind of concept. Now, Swiss side measured the impact of those stalls and found that over the course of an entire ride, they have a significant impact. And this is because when you're riding along and you feel your wheel twitch, you instinctively soft pedal for a moment. And then you, you know, have to pedal harder and surge power to get back on terms, or you sit up a little bit and become less aerodynamic. And that has a physiological cost over the course of an entire ride. And also it's unnerving. It just makes riding your bike a bit sketchy and less enjoyable. Now to address this and lessen the stall, a new rim shape has been devised. So the first thing is it's wider than it was before. The internal width is up to 22 millimeters from 19 millimeters on the previous generation. And the new shape is pretty curious. So it's kind of, well, it's like wide, like a U shape at the bottom. And then you can see there's almost an edge where it then tapers and becomes a different shape and almost like V shaped on the next sort of section of, uh, of the wheel rim. And the reason for this is that generation one, if you will, aero wheels were that sort of V shape. Now, while they were very aerodynamic and exhibited low drag at very low yaw, so kind of like head on, as soon as the wind was coming at an angle, so a higher degree of yaw, they became very in unstable and prone to stalling and they were twitchy. This led to U-shaped rims or toroidal shaped rims, which came as like the second generation of aero wheels. And they were done in a bid to lessen that stall and become more stable in crosswinds. And then what DT has done here is kind of the next evolution in that step. We have a UV shape, if you will, or VU, whichever you prefer. This VU shape that they settled on came about through extensive CFD studies, computational fluid dynamics, that was then verified and backed up in the wind tunnel with real life prototypes. And the result of it is said to be a 20% reduction in steering moment compared to the 50 millimeter deep ARC wheel, which are DT's kind of out and out racing wheels versus the 45 millimeter ERC endurance wheel we've got here. Now the result is said to be a wheel with lessened stall that feels much more stable and predictable. Hence why I can sort of ride no handed with it quite easily right now. And incidentally, one of the reasons why pros often don't use sort of 50 or 60 millimeter deep wheels and use 35s or 40s is because of that twitch, of that instability. It means it 
it's very difficult for them to ride no-handed with a 60 in, and then that compromises their ability to get dressed on the bike or take musettes and feed, things that are crucial within a bike race. And in case you're wondering what steering moment is, well, if we take the front wheel, it's the force that you have to apply to the handlebars in order to counteract the force from the wind hitting the wheel and wanting to push it that way as it pivots on your head tube. You're having to apply a force on the bar, pushing it the other way to keep the wheel straight. Another crucial element to wheel performance is tyres. Tyres are without doubt the best bang for your buck upgrade you can make. And DT doesn't want to limit your tyre choice. And that is one of the reasons why these new wheels are not hookless. If you're out riding on a mixture of roads and your average ride speed is 32 kilometres an hour or less, 20 miles an hour in old money, and Swiss side did a load of maths and they worked out that 28 millimeters becomes the optimum tire width. And that's because it's the best blend of aerodynamics, rolling resistance, and comfort. And it's for that reason, whenever I've done a, an epic Grand Fondo in recent years, such as the Mallorca 312 or the Tour de Station, I've opted for 28 mil tires. And I just love the way that 28 mil tires feel in the corners and when you're descending, you just have so much grip. Bearings are another key component to wheel performance. They need to be robust, durable and reliable. And if you've got knackered, grainy bearings or a dry free hub body, riders often tend to you know, keep riding it. And that's because, well, they either don't know how to change it, or it's just too complicated or too much of a faff. DC Swiss thinks about that too, and through clever design, aims to make things as simple and as easy as possible for even the most incompetent of home mechanics. DT Swiss hubs are great, and they're very robust, but also one of the best features of them is how easy they are to maintain, and you don't need tools to do it. So you can simply take your wheel in the workshop like I've got now and just pull off the free hub body without any tools. And once you take the free hub body off, you also are able to take the other parts out and replace the bearings if you need to replace them or upgrade them. So the 180 hubs that come on the 1100 wheels, they're high spec, they actually feature sink ceramic bearings in there, whereas the 240 hubs, which are on the 1400s, they have steel bearings, but you could upgrade them if you needed to, to ceramic bearings if, if, you, if you wanted to. And if you're not sure how to do that, well, there's loads of tutorial videos. It's very simple and you don't need tools. A couple of other details on the hub. So DT Swiss has been refining and modifying its hubs and tweaking them over the years. It doesn't stand still. One of the modifications has been actually the bearing spacing, especially on these 240 hubs. The bearings are further apart than they used to be. Now, according to DC Swiss, that makes this, the hub stiffer, but it also you know, puts less load on the bearings so that the service life of those bearings is going to be longer. They're not going to wear out as quick. And also you've got a 36 tooth ratchet now on here. Now having a 36 tooth ratchet over a 24 tooth ratchet just means that it picks up quicker. The engagement on the hub is less. So as soon as you press down on the pedals, it engages the hub and off you go. Now, as mentioned, you've got the slightly lower spec 240 hubs, but they're still like a gold standard of, of bicycle hubs. Sounds weird saying that they're like the lower, lower spec ones. They're on the 1400s and on the 1100s, you've got the 180 hubs with the sync ceramic bearings. But I'm going to do a free hub sound check to uh, see what they both hit sound like. I'll put the free hub body back on this one. And you can tell, tell me in the comments which ones you think sound the best. This is the 240. It sounds good, that. Slightly, slightly deeper sound, that one. A bit more resonant. Ooh. Well, let us know which one you prefer. Not all wheel brands consider the impact of rotational drag when designing their wheels. 
So wheels have to overcome, broadly speaking, two forms of drag in order to maximize their performance. The first is translational drag. That's the drag created over the wheel rim and all the other parts of the wheel as it moves forwards through the air. Notice I'm not spinning the wheel as I do this. It's just having to overcome drag. But it also has to overcome the drag generated by the wheel itself as it's rotating. This is the drag caused by the spokes as they push through the air and slosh around like a whisk. This drag is rotational drag. Minimizing the rotational drag of a wheel is an important area of performance that you can improve. And Swissside has built its own special jig in the Innenstadt wind tunnel that can measure rotational drag. Once you can measure rotational drag, well, DT then were able to optimize the wheels and try and reduce it to make them faster. And there's several details in here that do that. So firstly, the nipples, you'll see they're internal. Now removing the nipples and not having external nipples on the wheel, that reduces rotational drag by a fraction. You're talking a fraction of a watt. I've seen different figures at different speeds, but less than a watt but every little helps. You know, once you're looking into the realms of you know, performance wheels and the best wheels available to humanity, those tiny little details like that are what separate one wheel from the rest of the competition. The nipples are still accessible from uh, inside the rim once you remove the tire and the rim tape. But DT argues that you shouldn't have to adjust the tension on your nipples and true the wheel very often because the build quality is so high. And it claims this because the wheels are hand built in Switzerland and they feature a homogenous construction in that all the parts of the wheel are made by DT Swiss. So the spokes, the hubs, the nipples, the rims, it's all in house. Whereas a lot of other brands you use maybe DT Swiss hubs and then pair them with spokes from another brand or rims from another brand. And so by having everything here, it's all designed to work in harmony as a complete system. Another key design element for reducing rotational drag is the spokes. They're effectively the blades of the whisk that slosh through the air. So these new Aerolite 2 spokes on the 1100s are so thin. Like when you look at them down here, I mean, that is ridiculous, but they're also said to be incredibly strong. The, uh, the 1400 wheels, they feature the aero comp spokes, which are a slightly lower spec spoke, but still aerodynamic, bladed, and very good. But it's just one of the differences in the price and how that comes about. Another detail I like on the hubs is how narrow the front hubs are, both on the 180 and the 240. This is because of translational drag, so greater frontal area results in a slower wheel, it's more drag, only by a tiny amount, but you know, every little helps and details are important. And by having that narrower hub, it just presents less to the wind. What about weight then? I know you're all dying to know. Well, the higher end 1100s that I have here in the 45 depth are 14, 42 grams a pair. And the shallower wheel, the 35, that's 1391 grams per pair. The more affordable 1400s are a shade heavier, coming in at 1468 grams for the 35s and 1519 grams for a pair of the 45s, which is certainly you know, a respectable uh, weight for the, for the price range. But performance isn't just about weight, and DT Swiss and physics would argue that all the other sort of performance benefits and details built into wheels like this, such as, well, the narrow hubs, the hidden nipples, the bladed spokes, and the rim shape and such the like, count for more in aerodynamic savings and performance savings than 100 grams. Personally, I'd go for the deeper 45s because, well, science and, uh, or I just think deeper wheels look cooler. But uh, you know, by all means, let us know in the comments what you think uh, is better and what you would go for, 35 or 45. And also let us know what you think about the other aero details on these rather nice wheels. If you like this video and it's your bag, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go and get a brew now and warm up because it's pretty chilly here. I also quite fancy some banana bread. You didn't need to know that, but I told you anyway, bye.